up guys, today I'm going to talk about my experience using my iPhone 8 over the last two months as my primary vlogging camera. Talk about the good, the bad, and am I going to go ahead and keep it as my primary? Coming up. If you haven't done it yet, I'm going to link up here the video of me comparing my iPhone to my Canon 77D. I highly encourage you to watch it. It's not the best video for a tech savvy kind of person, but it gives you a real world average Joe comparison to the two and kind of why I originally went to my iPhone to begin with. Things I like most about using my iPhone for vlogging is obviously the fact that it's portable, you have it with you all the time, and it's easy to get to. You don't have a big camera you're lugging around or anything like that, so it's super easy to get to. People don't look at you quite as much when you're walking around holding a camera or a phone instead of a camera. Phone, people are common, okay? Everybody records stuff on their phone. So you don't get as many luck you lose, but it's also a bad thing. People looking at you with the camera, wondering what's going on, potential subscribers or followers. Next great thing, 4K at 60p. A lot of cameras don't offer that right now, and if they do, they're a lot more expensive. Comes already built into the iPhone 8, so that's super easy. But at the same time, a lot of people aren't recording 4K. It takes a long time to upload, a long time to process, and a long time to get onto YouTube. But you also got all your 1080p, 24, 30, 60 on here as well. So the last video I shot, the Cowboy Christmas, NFR's Cowboy Christmas, was shot in all 4K at 60. This video, 1080p at 30. 30 frames per second is kind of my favorite, and I don't feel like there's a big enough difference right now between 4K and 1080 to warrant shooting everything in 4K. The quality comes out just as good. The iPhone 8 has a great camera, is very good for shooting, and I don't even know if it can really be beat except for the higher end DSLs and some stuff like that. Now, not too long ago, I put a video out that showed my new setup for the iPhone. I've actually changed that up quite a bit and kind of brought it down a little bit. So I went from that whole setup, which is linked up above, to pretty much just this now. So I'm actually using the microphone on the phone primarily. I had the mic set up, as you'll see if you watch that video in there, and I was using that. But really, the, the microphone on the phone is very good, unless it's windy out, in which case I'll use the mic because this doesn't do very good with wind but otherwise the, the microphone is very good on the iPhone. So one of the first downsides that comes to mind is there's no viewfinder off to the side to see what you're doing. Granted you have the front facing camera like I'm using right now but as I'm probably realizing I'm doing I'm looking at the screen not at the camera. So that brings up two kind of negative points. First you can use the front facing camera like I am but I do feel like the video quality is different on the front facing camera. I don't feel like it's as quality. So so I definitely like to use the back camera and face it towards me. That brings up the problem of not having a viewfinder. Second problem if you call it a problem, is with the camera, you have a lens. You're looking right into it and you see what you need to look at. This one, you get that tiny little camera off to the side and it's just habit, especially on the front facing camera, to look at yourself and not look right into that little tiny lens. So another one of the disadvantages is getting the film or video from the phone onto the computer. It's a lot easier when you just have a little SD card, you pop it in, pop it back out, pop it into your computer and just pull everything over. Plus, I use Filmora Wondershare for my video editing, it doesn't like the iPhone as much. I have, it's just, it's funkier doing it and it takes longer to process. So that's another disadvantage as compared to a regular. So as you just saw, Obviously the iPhone has time-lapse and slow-mo, something that not every camera has. A lot of the big DSLs don't have the slow-mo action. So that's another advantage there that you gotta consider. So the iPhone for vlogging, yes, I think it's perfect for that. I think it's perfect for new vloggers, people who don't wanna spend the money on a camera yet, people who don't have a camera, people who want something that they can just grab and use whenever when they're out vlogging i think it's perfect and it is good for overall vlogging i've used it for two months now you can check out my other vlogs and see kind of how it works and it is good for that it is perfect but in the end with all that said 
I do feel like I'm gonna go back to a camera. I just, I like using the camera. I liked having all the options available for settings. I liked having the viewfinder and I liked having the lens that I could look right into and different options with the lens. This, the iPhone does have a very narrow field of view as opposed to limitless options you have with the camera and with all the different lenses. So in the end, I'm gonna go back to the camera, but yes, the iPhone is good for vlogging and I will keep using it when I don't have my camera. With all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below. What do you think of the iPhone for vlogging? Have you used it? Are you using a camera? Have you used it and gone back to a camera? I'm interested to know. I'm interested to get your thoughts on that. So make sure you uh, let me know down below. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you.